If there's one thing we all know about the Ultimate Fighter, it can get pretty controversial. However, it's not always those inside the fighter's house who take things too far, or make terrible choices. Occasionally, it's the judges, the coaches, and those inside the ring. The Ultimate Fighter is the most hyped reality TV show among MMA fans, giving chances to lesser-known professional fighters with talent to make it into the UFC and get their name in the public eye. However, this also means whenever a fighter is knocked out of the bracket in a close, poor, or disputed decision, it's controversial among fans, fighters, and coaches alike. I'm Eli Tried, and I'm going to be talking about the most controversial fight endings on The Ultimate Fighter. First, let's look at Season 7's Kale Yarborough against Patrick Schultz. Kale Yarborough versus Patrick Schultz wasn't really anticipated to be much of a tactical or skilled matchup. Kale being the fifth pick for Team Rampage was sometimes looked down upon and considered one of the weaker fighters in the house, and Patrick was defeated in the qualifying matches on Day 1. In fact, he only made it on the show after Paul Bradley had to be removed from the competition. Due to an infectious skin disease, both Kale and Patrick were more skilled in kickboxing and their stand-up rather than wrestling and their ground game. This was anticipated to be an interesting fight, with both fighters swinging for the fences. It's fair to say both fighters had something to prove walking into the cage. As the first round got underway, both fighters started swinging and landing some nasty punches and kicks. Patrick floored Kale just a minute into the first round, with what looked to be an overhand right. Kale would quickly recover from this and return to his feet, but shortly after, he fell from landing a kick. After that, Kale would pretty much match Patrick's energy, exchanging blows with him before taking him down with just under two minutes left in the first round. The fight would go back to the feet but briefly, as Kale would score another takedown with just 40 seconds left in the match. Patrick showed himself to be a better striker in the first round, doing more damage, but Kale had about 80 seconds of ground control. Patrick was noticeably more tired starting the second round, and Kale still had energy. Kale would exchange some punches with Patrick before taking him down to the mat and dropping elbow after elbow and punch after punch. Kale would earn almost four minutes of ground control time before the round ended. There was no argument that Kale was the winner of the second round. Both corners were preparing for a third round, because while Kale won the second round, it seemed as though Patrick had earned the first. When everyone heard that there was already a decision, there were boos before the winner was even announced. Kale's coach, Forrest Griffin, announced that Kale would fight a third round. Patrick's coach, Rampage Jackson, agreed and everyone started cheering for a third round. Kale was declared the winner by majority decision, and Rampage Jackson would demolish a door shortly after the fight. Because remember, this is the ultimate fighter. Rampage Jackson is contractually obligated to destroy a door after one of the fighters he's coaching loses a fight. Most people had Patrick up in the first round, not only because of the two times he made his opponent fall, but also because while standing and trading, Patrick was landing harder shots on Kale and clearly outmatched him standing up. Kale's short amount of time on the ground the first round wouldn't negate that. I'd find it hard to believe that a majority of judges would have scored the first round for Kale, but it's entirely possible that the first round was scored 10-9 for Patrick with Kale earning a 10-8 in the second round. Regardless, the fight was razor thin and the result sparked anger among many. Then there is the case of Season 5's finale undercard between Gray Maynard and Rob Emerson. This fight was between two fighters who previously were eliminated, but were brought back to fight each other on the undercard in the finale between the two finalists, Nate Diaz and Manny Gamburian. The fight aired with the Ultimate Fighter 5 finale, and both fighters were cast members on the show. Gray Maynard would take on Rob Emerson. These two fighters had contradictory fighting styles, as Rob is primarily a striker and Gray is a wrestler. However, both fighters were skilled in a variety of styles. The fight had an exciting start, with both fighters throwing bombs at each other right out of the gate. This didn't last long though as Rob would take down Gray early, but soon regretted it as he was being outclassed on the ground. Rob would try to stand up and bring the fight back to his feet, but was pulled down by Gray. Gray would attempt to slip in a guillotine choke that Rob would barely slip out of. Gray would land some nasty knees while on top later in the fight. As Gray stood up with just over a minute left in the first round, Rob would attempt a heel hook. Gray would exact his revenge by punching down and doing quite a bit of damage for the rest of the round. While Rob did a good job surviving and minimizing the damage he took, Gray easily won the first round. The second the second round was short but brutal. Rob was hurt going into the round, and Gray would land a punch that made Rob stumble back. After that, Gray picked up Rob and slammed him on the mat. Rob would tap after that. The pain he sustained during that slam rendered him unable to continue, and Gray had won the fight. Except, while slamming Rob on the mat, Gray would hit his own head on the ground, knocking himself out. Gray could clearly be seen crawling on the ground trying to regain consciousness for a while after the fight. The commentators empathized with Rob, bringing up the fact that he conceded the match with an unconscious guy right on top of him, and if he had just waited a little longer, he would have won. The commentators were even celebrating Gray's win before the official decision. When the fight was declared a no contest, booze immediately erupted from the crowd. The post-fight interviews with Joe Rogan were a hoot. 
an absolute riot even, with Rob claiming that he could tell Gray was unconscious, met with boos from the crowd, and Gray claimed he wasn't even unconscious at all, bickering with Joe Rogan about it. Unfortunately, these two would never rematch. Both had careers in the UFC, Rob Emerson going 3-3 in the promotion, and Gray Maynard having far much more success, adding wins over Frankie Edgar, Nate Diaz, and Kenny Florian to his resume before retiring. This fight left a sour taste in everyone's mouth, and it's unfortunate that we never got to see a resolution. Next, we have to bring up Season 19's Roger Zapata versus Ian Steffens. Roger Zapata and Ian Steffens butted heads in the preliminary round of The Ultimate Fighter 19. This fight was not exciting at all. I won't even spend much time talking about what happened. Dana White was furious with how these fighters performed, calling it one of the most boring fights ever and referring to the season as the group of guys who didn't want it. I can understand the sentiment, because all three rounds between Roger and Ian went the same way. Ian would bring Roger down and hold him there, while Roger would spend the entire round trying to hit him with the little mobility afforded to him. Despite this, Roger landed a few hits, and although it was a boring fight, I can't say no damage was done. Ian is a blonde, but looked like a ginger by the end of the fight. The main reason for this is Roger was dropping elbows downwards onto Ian. This is debatably illegal, depending on which angle the elbows are coming from. In the middle of the third round, the referee, Steve Mazzagatti, deducted a point from Roger for an illegal elbow and temporarily stopped the match. Dana White, among others, criticized Steve Mazzagatti for this call, because he didn't officially warn Roger before taking a point. At this point, Dana White walked out of the gym, and missed one of the craziest and stupidest endings to a fight ever. After the point deduction, things were not looking good for Roger. As the fight went to the judges, the judges ruled the fight a majority draw, with two of the judges scoring the third round 9-9. The one dissenting judge scored the match 10-8 in favor of Ian. Normally, fights like this would be called a draw. But since there needed to be a winner, it was decided not that Ian Steffen should get the victory because of the 10-8 score, or that the fight should go to a fourth round. It was instead decided that all judges would be handed a piece of paper, with the two fighters' names on it, and they would be directed to circle the name of the person they thought had won the fight. In fashion with all the madness, Steve Mazzagatti announced Ian Zapata to be the winner before clarifying that Roger Zapata was the winner. Tiebreakers are not usually decided like this, and the ruling is officially considered a draw because of the way things turned out. The controversial decision caused a lot of animosity between the two teams, with Ian's coaches and teammates arguing for him and telling him he was robbed, and Roger's coach, BJ Penn, telling him he did the right thing by going to the locker room before they could reverse the decision. Dana White came back to a near riot, which he needed to settle, as most fighters and coaches were confused as to what just happened. After Dana White explained the situation, he said that Ian Steffen should have won the fight while clarifying that he was not impressed with his performance at all. We never got to see a rematch between the two, but considering what Dana White had to say about their performances, I don't think either fighter was dumb nor brave enough to ask for one. Then, of course, we have to talk about the Season 7 finale, C.B. Dalloway versus Amir Sadala. While this example is more agreed upon and a little less controversial than some, it was notable because of what was at stake. CB and Amir were the two finalists of The Ultimate Fighter Season 7, and were competing live with thousands, no tens of thousands, of fans in the stadium. Their journeys had culminated to this very moment, and the winner would earn a six-figure contract to fight in the UFC. As the first round started, CB would land a couple of kicks before going in for the takedown about a minute into the round. CB would eventually have Amir on the ground while he was landing some blows from above. During this entire fight, Amir had done a pretty good job at avoiding damage and moving with CB's submission attempts. But this time, CB was exactly where Amir wanted him. Amir was able to grab CB's arm and sink in an armbar. In spite of this, CB was still in the fight. He leaned into Amir and landed a few more blows before he tapped a singular time. As soon as the referee, Herb Dean, saw this, he put an end to the fight. CB immediately stood up in protest to this call, as he thought the fight had been put to an end early. Whether or not he intended to is up for debate, but the fact that he tapped is not. He clearly moved his arm, indicating a tap right in front of the referee. CB Dalloway later commented on it saying, I didn't fully commit to the tap but I did hit him once. I guess they ruled that a tap. I thought you had to go on and start tapping out. I did hit him once. Right as I did that, I felt my arm get into a position where I could get out. At that point, Herb Dean had ruled it as a tap out. It's kind of a crappy way for it to end for me after putting in all the hard work, training, and everything for this fight. I would have at least liked to have it went a few more rounds. Having it end so quick is just a disappointment. We, unfortunately, did not get to see CB and Demir fight each other again, although both went on to have careers in the UFC. Ending the fight was the right call for Herb Dean to make, he saw a tap and moved in. And while he may have done it just a bit early, that's better than stopping a fight too late. Next, I have to mention the judging on Season 16. First, I'll talk about Colton Smith versus Eddie Ellis, 
then Michael Hill versus Matt Sikor. When most fans remember season 16, they'll remember that the judging was particularly awful, and a few controversial decisions were made. I will focus on two of these poor decisions made back to back. The first decision that was controversial was Colton Smith versus Eddie Ellis. Eddie Ellis had won the first round pretty convincingly, but Colton Smith did even better in the second round. Most people had expected the fight to go to a third round, and were confused when they found out the fight had already gone to a decision. Colton won because the judges scored the second round. 10-8 in favor of him. Dana White was irritated with this choice, saying that they're handing out 10-8s like they're candy. The second controversial decision was the one presiding over the long and boring fight between Michael Hill and Matt Sikor. The first two rounds ended with a judge's score of 19-19, so they took it into a third round. While a close round, most people think that Matt Sikor won, but the judges scored it in favor of Michael Hill and gave him the win. And finally, the most controversial endings on the list are Season 11's disqualifications. The Season 11 disqualifications were something truly unique. There were only two times in the history of The Ultimate Fighter that a fight was disqualified in a match, and both of them happened in Season 11. The only other disqualification that ever happened on the show is when Richie Smolin faced kidney issues due to intense training and his weight cut, forcing him to withdraw from a fight in Season 27. But this disqualification happened before the fighter stepped in the ring. The two disqualifications that happened in Season 11 were the results of illegal strikes, rendering the opponent unable to continue. The first disqualification happened in the match between Casey Escola and Rich Antonito. Casey and Rich started the round by exchanging a few blows neither of them looking for a takedown. Rich would drop Casey with his punches a minute into the first round, and would immediately start hitting him from above. Rich landed an ungodly amount of punches, drawing blood before Casey managed to get up with three minutes left in the round. Casey would stand for two seconds before being slammed back onto the mat in the most brutal fashion I have ever witnessed. He got dropped like an NFL rookie with a concussion. He was slammed harder than you guys should slam the subscribe button. After that, Casey managed to get a hold of one of Rich's arms and went for a submission. Rich Rich managed to escape, and while he was getting up, Casey hit him with a knee to the face. That was the illegal blow that ended the match. Rich was dominating the fight, and it got ended with those strikes to the face. Dana White said the referee and judges made the right decision, while Casey's coach, Tito Ortiz, was furious. Casey would go on to say that he respected Rich as a person, but not as a fighter because he thought he was looking for a way out. And after seeing how the fight was going, the only thing I think Rich would have tried to get out of is explaining to Casey's dentist what happened to his teeth. Rich later had to drop out of the competition due to injuries he sustained. However, that can't really be blamed on Casey because it was an injury to his hand. The second disqualification occurred between Brad Tavares and Seth Bozinski. The fight had a bit of a slow start, but Seth landed a few blows then went for a takedown. He took Brad's back right after that. Seth would be able to get over two minutes of ground control before Brad was able to slip out. Brad got into a position to ground and pound with just over 90 seconds left in the first round, and he needed to turn things around. Brad did not have much luck with his striking, so he went back to wrestling. Seth, being better on the ground, was able to set up a triangle choke. But Brad was able to pick him up and slam him on the ground a few times to free himself. After that, the rest of the round was pretty action-packed to say the least, both fighters doing whatever they could to take the round. Brad threw his knee at Seth missing his target and propelling himself into the ground. While Brad was falling, Seth threw a kick, and the unintentional soccer kick would end the fight right as the first round ended. Seth would immediately apologize, and Brad would go and sit down in a corner, confused as to what had happened. Brad didn't really regain full consciousness, and the doctor would rule that he was unable to continue, much to the devastation of Seth. In interviews after, Seth would say, I wasn't worried about the fight, I was worried about him. And Brad would say, what a bad way to end a good fight. Seth had been disqualified and his coach, Tito Ortiz, was once again furious. Tito's assistant coaches claimed that Brad had been kicked in the armpit, saying that, you already gave their team one gift in reference to the previous disqualification. He was later disproven by the replays. This angered Rich, who saw this as disrespectful because he had been kneed in the head. After that, a shouting match ensued between Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell hopping in to defend his fighters against insinuations that they were faking their injuries. The altercation would end with fighters and assistant coaches holding the two men back. It's endings like this, and the disputes that happen after that make the sport look unprofessional and dishonorable. It's a tale as old as time in the MMA world. If you guys like this list of controversial fights, then you'll like this video about a controversial fighter. See you guys there.